breaking news! The trailer came out for the newest DLC for Jurassic World Evolution 2. Let's have a look at it. Whoa, here we are. Oh, Celia Physis. Oh, there it is! The Megalodon! Oh, Microceratus as well! Oh! Park Manager's Collection Pack coming! Wow, okay, that is... That is like in like three days, is it? I, I think so. I think that's three days. What? Hold on! There was so much to unpack there! What? <laughs> it was over so quick! So, this appears to be a new pterosaur? Definitely looks like a Hatsugopteruxy thing. This... I'm not too sure. It could be a Celiophysis, but I feel like isn't Celiophysis in the game already. But another very small dinosaur, a bit like a compy, but bigger. I'd say smaller than Herarosaur, bigger than a compy. It's sort of an in-between. Then here we go, the Megalodon. Now, I was always curious as to what kind of design they would go for with a Megalodon. Because, of course, Megalodon, very closely related to Great White, or the Great White. But built different, very different, a lot thicker. And you can see some of the patterns along the top here. Very short, stubby head. There's been a massive head, but it's not been quite, quite a small, short one. And very different to the one that we've got on the Nexus. We have, we have seaweed. Oh my God! Wow. Yeah, that is that's a new, new uh, decoration right there. The seaweed, so, a kelp forest, something we've wanted for such a long time. But a welcome addition to Jurassic World Evolution. I wonder if there's any more little hidden Easter eggs. And then Microceratus is actually, or my, my, is it Microceratus? I think it is. This has been on the list of dinosaurs that we've wanted in the game. Well, especially a certain somebody uh, has wanted this dinosaur in the game for such a long time. A herbivore. Hopefully it'll have an interacting animation with What's it called? Um, Homalocephale. That'd be quite nice. You know, the two smaller herbivores that usually get stepped on by the carnivores. I'm sure it'll die in a, in a lovely, lovely way. And then we have this thing. And it actually eats goats. I don't think the Quetza even ate a goat. Did it have a goat eating animation? It might have, because it definitely had a human eating animation. And the goat's like, yeah! <laughs> it gets taken away. So Park Manager's Collection Pack coming. May 16th, not that long away. So let's get into the other details. So first up, we have the highly anticipated Megalodon. It does, however, seem to be quite small in comparison to the Mosasaur. So I'm assuming, you know, maybe Universal wanted to keep the Mosasaur as the apex kind of creature because let's be honest, the Mosasaur that does exist in the franchise is of titanic proportions. It's basically a kaiju, especially in 2015 in the first movie when it jumped out and ate that great white shark. It could have been a kaiju. Could have been freaking Godzilla. It got smaller over the years, but, uh, you know, inconsistencies. But it does seem like the Megalodon, um, mm, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be able to take on the most, or maybe the Tylosaur or something like that. But I'm not too sure about the Mosasaur. Lovely definition there on the patterns. You've got the spots, you've got the stripes, you've got this speed line that runs down of white just along the bottom there. Uh, really cool. Really nice to see a Megalodon. Highly anticipated. We've wanted it for so freaking long. And we actually have a little bit of description for these creatures from Frontier themselves, which goes, the Megalodon is an apex predator that ruled the oceans for over 13 million years. With a bite five times stronger than that of a T-Rex, the Colossal Hunter is the largest shark ever discovered and the true meaning of ferocity. Ah, and here's another shot of the Megalodon jumping up and eating the Great White Shark. So yeah, interesting. But again, a nice view of the different patterns that we could get for it. Microceratus! Oh, he's so cute and a little pattern on the head. Sitting down on the beach, ready to be eaten by something, I'm sure. Hailing from the late Cretaceous period, this small ceratopsid has a distinctive frill and moves with agility and speed to avoid predators. Very interesting. With a name meaning small horned, this fascinating little herbivore likes to live in a larger group of their own species. So maybe it doesn't get on with other ones, but every kind of media I've seen Microceratus in, it just seems to be running along the legs of everything else. So I think maybe it'll be okay. Ah, so this was it. It's a Segiosaurus or Segiosaurus? I think it's a Segiosaurus. That possibly could have been in the novel Jurassic Park. 
I could be wrong, but I have a, I have a strange feeling that that was one of the dinosaurs that was in the park. But again, interesting to see. I don't think out of everything, it's the most hyped creature. I think it probably goes Megalodon. Then it said, then it goes maybe even Microsur Microceratus, then the Flyer, and then Sedgesaur. So it depends if it has interactions with other dinosaurs. That's really what makes or breaks a dinosaur. It's interactions with others, and if it has any unique animations. That's what, that's what wins over the fans. Sedgeosaurus scurrying through the sands of the early Jurassic period. Sedgeosaurus is a small theropod with long arms and powerful legs for its size. Less fearsome than its larger brethren, it relies on speed and cunning to hunt its prey. And I just remembered that Frontier put in Troodon, and this looks very similar to Troodon. I mean, of course, the eyes are different, and Troodon had huge eyes, but as far as build goes, yeah, it's, it's very much like a Troodon, so... Again, it would be nice to see with some unique animations, but I feel as though the bulk of the budget for this DLC has went into the Megalodon and possibly the Microceratus to give it, you know, unique animations because that thing's going to have to be eaten by other pterosaurs as well. Thanatos Dracon. This aptly named Dragon of Death. Oh my god, that's his name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> ruled over the prehistoric skies of South America during the late Cretaceous period. With an enormous wingspan of approximately 30 feet, this giant pterosaur was an aerial force to be reckoned with. And a killer of goats as well. But not only that, but we have these interesting little extra things that they've added to the game. Little E.T. T-Rex skin. So... From Camp Cretaceous, we had Big E.T. skin. Now we have Little E.T. coming as a customizable skin for the T-Rex. We have new decorations as well. Three kelp plants are now available to decorate lagoons. And a version of a lagoon light can now be selected and built on land to illuminate parks. Again, these are things that have already put in the, like been put in by Nexus, the mods. And it's just interesting to see how popular those things are. And then Frontier looks at that and goes, huh, we should probably put that in. <laughs> and then they do. Because putting the things that are lagoon only on the land, like the underwater observatory, looks so cool. And if you have an area that's beach themed, it works perfectly well. I mean, maybe the floating fish, you could say the hologram, but anyway. And we also have bug fixers. So Spinoraptor and Indominus Rex are no longer listed as having a positive relationship in their respective info panels. So when this comes out, we've definitely got to keep an eye on that relationship because they might have a cool killing animation now. The Angelodocus research node has been moved from Challenge 01 for medium hard difficulties, uh, Jurassic difficulties, and the Cap Cretaceous logo has been added to the Tarbosaur and Spinoceratops in the Jurassic World database entries. And then they list um, miscellaneous quality of life updates, variable st stability fixes, animation fixes, audio fixes, and text and localization fixes. And there you have it. Are you hyped for this new DLC? Is it one that you're going to buy after seeing what we're going to get with it? New kelp decorations, uh, you know, something to make the Megalodon enclosure more unique. Having a lagoon filled with kelp and then putting the Megalodon in there could be quite cool. You know, you can't really see where it is and then all of a sudden, boom, it attacks the shark. Some of that would be really cool, and especially with mods added to the game as well. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. What Frontier needs to do to make this really good is to have this Megalon feel like it's worth the price tag because that's what we're buying it for. But it would be nice to have seen some other aquatics for me personally. Lagoons are quite dead. But like I said, this Megalodon needs to be worth the price tag, needs to have unique animations, and I want to see it fight the Mosasaur in a cool way. I mean, they always have an interaction that's quite interesting, but because it's going to have its own unique animation, we don't have any shark-looking creatures apart from the Ichthyosaur in the game. So I'm assuming it's going to have some really cool animations with uh, eating smaller things and, of course, fighting with the Mosasaur and eating from the feeder. That's the main things. be really cool. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it here. If you've got comments, leave them down below. And if you like the video, throw it a like if you're feeling extra generous. And until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, bye-bye.